Hello, welcome back. This is Kristen on our journey through the Bible, one chapter at a time. So glad you're here and I'm back and it didn't take me a month. I know it's been sporadic lately, but um, we are in numbers going into chapter 19 today, yesterday in chapter 18. And uh, today it's going to be talking about the purification and it kind of ties in interestingly enough with um, things coming up. So we'll get into that afterwards, but uh, let's jump right in. And uh, thanks again for being here. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron saying, this is the ordinance of the law, which the Lord has commanded saying, speak to the children of Israel that they bring you a red heifer without blemish in which there is no defect and on which a yoke has never come. You shall give, give it to Eleazar, the priest, that he may take it outside the camp and it shall be slaughtered before him. And Eleazar, the priest, shall take some of its blood with his finger and sprinkle some of its blood seven times directly in front of the tabernacle of meeting. Then the heifer shall be burned in his sight, its hide, its flesh, its blood, its offal shall be burned, and the priest shall take cedar wood and hyssop and scarlet and cast them into the midst of the burning fire of the heifer. Then the priest shall wash his clothes, he shall bathe in water, and afterward he shall come into the camp and the priest shall be unclean until the evening. And the one who burns it shall wash his clothes in water, bathe in water, and shall be unclean until the evening. Then a man who is clean shall gather up the ashes of the heifer and store them outside the camp in a clean place, and they shall be kept for the congregation of the children of Israel for the water of purification. It is for purifying from sin. And one who gathers the ashes of the heifer shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. It shall be a statue forever to the children of Israel and to the stranger who dwells among them. He who touches the dead body of anyone shall be unclean seven days. He shall purify himself with this water on the third day and on the seventh day then he will be clean. But if he does not purify himself on the third day and on the seventh day, he will not be clean. Whoever touches the body of anyone who has died and does not purify himself defiles the tabernacle of the Lord. That person shall be cut off from Israel. He shall be unclean because the water of purification was not sprinkled on him. His uncleanness is still on him. This is the law when a man dies in a tent. All who come into the tent and all who are in the tent shall be unclean seven days. And every open vessel which has no cover fastened on it is unclean. Whoever in the open field touches one who is slain by a sword or who has died or a bone of a man or a grave shall be unclean seven days. And for an unclean person, they shall take some of the ashes of the heifer burnt for purification from sin and running water shall be put on them in a vessel. A clean person shall take hyssop and dip it in the water, sprinkle it on the tent, on all the vessels, on the persons who were there or on the one who touched a bone, the slain, the dead or a grave. The clean person shall sprinkle the unclean on the third day and on the seventh day and on the seventh day he shall purify himself, wash his clothes and bathe in water. At the evening he shall be clean. But the man who is unclean and does not purify himself, that person shall be cut off from among the assembly because he has defiled the sanctuary of the Lord. The water of purification has not been sprinkled on him. He is unclean. It shall be a perpetual statute for them. 
He who sprinkles the water of purification shall wash his clothes, and he who touches the water of the purification shall be unclean until evening. Whatever the unclean person touches shall be unclean, and the person who touches it shall be unclean until evening. So God was serious about following these rules. And there's a lot of reasons for these things too. But um, as far as bringing that information to today, the Jews still think they need the red heifer for the purification of the priests, but they don't know where that is. There's a couple of people who think they know where it is. And what they did was they took just a few little pieces of the ashes of the original red heifer. Needless to say, there was a lot of them used, but they would take a little bit from the original one and then they would burn another red heifer and they would add those ashes to that one. So basically trying to um, bring the original red heifer into it for the purification of sin. So kind of interesting how that one might play out when the time comes. Thanks so much for joining me. Going to jump into Numbers 20 next. And let's see, that one is, let's see what the title is. Edom refuses passage to Israel. Ooh, that should be interesting. Thanks again. God bless. See you soon.